I'm working out how this is all going to work in my, in my head. Pause. For those of you following at home, now pause the video and take a look and do the work yourself. You know, this could be like a distance ed course or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. So, <clears throat> all right, let's hear what uh, the groups have to say about this. Um, let's start with, well, who would like to start, off, start us off and give us some ideas? Oh, by the way, just, you know, uh, some, some issues came up, you know, why are we, like, you know, are we stereotyping here? Are we saying that all girls are like this or that, you know, uh, of course, we're, in, we're certainly in the realm of stereotypes, uh, which is a dangerous territory to be in. But the way I would think of, think of it as, as this, you know, you're, you're stereotyping in a negative way when you say, you know, when you give someone a present and you're like, you gave me a, a poster of a Ferrari, why'd you do that? And the person says, well, I, you're a guy, I thought you'd like that. You know, obviously that's bad, right? But it's not so bad to say, to look at society and say, you know, men are, tend to be more violent than women. You know, this is a problem that we need to consider, you know, like this is a real thing, right? Not, now, when you say to someone, oh, you're a guy, so I assume that you're a rapist. Like that's obviously totally disgusting to say that to someone, right? But to say that most violent crimes, including rapes, are committed by men and that, you know, most murders are men killing their wives, um, I'm not sure if that's true or not. But, uh, but certainly, you know, but it might, it could very well be. Um, you know, that's a, real, that, that, that's a real thing. So in terms of looking at these, gen, these generalities, um, making generalizations like that, we're trying to understand the big picture. We're trying to understand society and we're trying to understand people uh, in general. Um, how you apply that to individuals is, well, it doesn't apply. It basically does not apply. We're all, you guys do, are, not, are not stereotypes. Although you, maybe you have met someone and you've thought to yourself, wow, she is such a stereotype, or he is such a stereotype. He's a guy's guy all the way, you know. Maybe some people are really are like that, but that's probably a minority of people. All right, um, so where are we going to start? All right, in character. So let's start talking about character. So please um, fill out these, these notes as we go along, and you might need to get, take a second piece of paper. All right, um, go ahead. All right, so we could we could make the argument that these are um, that there is something, you know, something um, that if you wanted to, you know, apply, appeal to a certain audience, a certain demographic. If you're a publisher and you want to sell books to women specifically, you're like, hey, there, you know, our, it's only guys who are buying our books. How are we going to market? How are we going to make money from this other half of the of the um, of the market? You might say, okay, we want to find we want to find a book which has some characters who, who do or think about these things. All right, that's why this thing kind of comes up, probably. All right, let's go to another, uh, another group. Oh, sorry, anyone else from the character group want to talk about that? No? All right, who, who's next? Go ahead, Stephanie. Style. All right. Um, I, what I did was explain examples, not generalize it. Sure, so examples? Once Upon a Time is part of the narrator telling a detailed story, not a detailed story. And girls are supposed to talk a lot and talk in detail about things like feelings and opinions. Well, boys are supposed to use terse descriptions and talk as little as possible and not share their feelings.
we getting this down? I'm putting these scare quotes, guys, as in, you know, so-called guys, typical guys, whatever that means. Guys, supposed to be terse. Supposed to be terse. Man, if I'm going to record this, I really got to work on my, my writing. Supposed to be terse. Good. Anything else from the style group? All right. Uh, one more. Yeah, go ahead. Personification of the pants. Like, they've had a good life before us. So, um, girls are supposed to um, have feelings or, or identify with things, even objects. But boys are supposed to minimize their interactions, personifications. There you go. That's a really good point. You know, personification. Is, it, is personification, could personification be seen as a gendered, as a feminine device? Stephanie is, su is suggesting that perhaps it could be a, a gendered, a gendered uh, device. Personification could relate to empathy, to, to, to taking your feelings or trying to understand the feelings of something else, even if that something else is an inanimate object. I think, that's really, I think that's really persuasive. By the way, I'm a very empathetic person. I, that's, not, that's, that's one thing that's always, that I've always, uh, uh, again, empathetic empathy is so important for everybody. Guys need to be, guys need to be way more empathetic. All right. Um, so what else? Uh, we have character style. How about um, narration? Is it though? Is it chronological order? Sisterhood is in chronological order? Okay, all right. And it's in first person, but uh, the narrator uses four people, so it's like multiple first person. Right? It's a story within a story. It sets up parts as symbols, or the path as a symbol. Yeah, so this is the very beginning of the book, and you can see how this is setting up what's going to come later in terms of symbolism. You know, obviously we can tell from just looking at the, you know, the 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 the, the, the cover and the and the title. This is, you know, the pants are going to be a symbol, and it's very it's very clear about that in the in the beginning. It even talks about the way of the pants, um, whatever that means. I forget what it meant now. Um, what does the way of the pants mean? Can we find that quote for us? Regular but painful life trend. That one st that, that, this stuck out as stuck out to me as like okay hit hit, hit us hit us over the head with it, the thematic kind of idea. Regular but painful life transitions. Summer, going apart, coming back together. Talks about puberty in here. Uh, anyways, all right. Um, so set of the pants as a symbol. The you know we might ask yourself well why choose pants as a symbol? Are is a is is, uh, is is choosing clothing as a simple as especially uh, likely? Well, all right, moving on. Um, diction. Voice and diction. Happy just doing their basic job of covering your butt without making it look fatter than it actually is, which um, Les 
All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start highlighting instead of copying down. Um, we always start to show the yes, all right, all right? And can you tell us what, what about that seems gendered to you, seems feminine? Um, we're just, we're just, this image that we always, so that I think of a girl, like, happy, and then it's like, we can't really imagine a guy. A bunch of, a bunch of girls together, yeah. yes, and they laugh together. Yeah. Being silly together, guys. guys together. Yes, <laughs> it does. It seems a bit less. Doesn't seem to make as much sense, I guess, or it doesn't seem. All right. Yeah, that seems. Yeah. So this sort of specialized vocabulary to refer to clothing specifically. Red spaghetti strap thing. Bloomingdale's. All right. So these, I mean, this is, in a way you might say, this is almost, I mean, it's, it's kind of the details. How about, um, well, that's good. Anything else? Uh, all shopping quotes. Yeah. Good. All right. And how about uh, what else do we have? Um, plot and conflict is that one? Yeah. Plot and they conflict. They like they bond with their clothing. Plot and conflict. So they, bl they bond through clothing. And it seems to be, it seems to be foreshadowing, right? What's going to happen? What's going to be the conflict in this, in this story, you think? Am I the only one who thinks it's pretty obvious that they're going to be pulled apart, separated? Yeah? I mean, I haven't read this book. Sorry, who, this is Carrie's. Um, have you read? Have you read the whole book? Is that what happens? Do they get pulled apart, separated? They go on, they go on different different vacations. Is would you say that separation is turns out to be a conflict in this book? They have their own conflicts. Okay, so they each they each have their own sort of story then. Oh, I see. Good. Um, so let's see. We've got character, style, um, diction, and and voice, narration, plot, and conflict. What am I missing? Genre. Say that last bit, bit again. And how, like, the group of girls. Yep. Like, Which means. Like how it feels like all these events were set. Like, right? the year Events meant to be. Okay. All right. So, by way of contrast, and I think this is where it's going to get interesting now. So, we have lots, we have tons of ideas. So many ideas, it's like on like five different pieces of paper here. I don't know how you guys got all that stuff down. Um, but we have all these, all these ideas here about 
about the sisterhood of the traveling pants and the, the sort of gendered aspect of it, let's take a look now at Die Twice and see how this changes. Does, this, does Die Twi Twice have an, a stereotypically or, or an especially masculine style? Does it have a masculine narrator who is concerned about masculine things? And what I would also ask you is, apart from just looking at your formal concern as well, ask yourself, what are the values that this text has? What are the values that we can believe that the author, perhaps, might even have, given the fact that probably his protagonist is someone we're meant to like? And his protagonist's problems and the way the protagonist solves his problems, even if we don't agree with it because maybe the protagonist commits crimes or something, we don't know yet. But the question is, um, does this express masculine values? I mean, there are certain values, values here, I think, of togetherness, right? Values of friendship. Not that men don't value friendship, but there is a, a certainly a, a, a stereotypical, um, you know, uh, feminine quality to that, I think. So in what ways do we see a similar kind of stereotype or uh, ma of masculinity playing out in Die Twice? Any questions? All right, let's take a look. All right, um, so die twice. Um, instead of making the, that same list that I was doing before, I think maybe more interesting if I make the if I if I just take a look here. Um, so let's talk about die twice. Uh, who wants to start off? Start us off. All right, Stephanie. For style, uh, most of this excerpt is written in dialogue. Yeah. And it's meant, it's it's meant to uh, be terse, not be wordy, and also to not explain the background that clearly, because um, because for boys, it's it's boys are supposed to just listen to. Uh, listen to this this ambiguous dialogue and either deal with not knowing it, not want to know more, not want to figure it out, or be smart enough, be capable enough to figure it out for themselves. Deal with it, be capable enough with it. That seems to be a, a strong feeling of this text. You guys get that feeling? Like deal with it. This this sense, you know, be, deal with it, be capable. Um, And it's also not in the sense, it's not in the sense of be strong, uh, hate your superior, hate authority, hate whoever's as assigning this mission. It's only, I mean, you're only supposed to be strong against the enemies, they, whoever they are, because you don't know, not against the one telling you to do this stuff. All right, you guys know that? Be strong, but be strong against the enemy still respect authority so it's not it's this is there's no there's no hint there's not, it's not a, even though our main character he's a little bit rebellious perhaps you know he does he's a he's a fly by his own you know what do you call it? he's a loose cannon type character a oh, little he bit is? I didn't even notice a little well not I mean a little bit you know I didn't say you're supposed to kill them they, they, they argue a little bit about what the right thing to do was right um you killed them? I didn't reply. You know. Okay. Why? You know, and all this stuff, you know. Off the books doesn't mean they're executing people, David. You know. You're a loose cannon! You know. And, uh... But, you know, he, he justifies... He justifies his... His, his, uh, his actions in terms of, you know, the... You know, the, the prime directive or whatever of this organization uh, uh, protecting them. So, yeah. This is a, you could say then, what, what Stephanie is doing here is she's pointing out uh, that there is a political reading here. I mean, we're talking about gender, but there's also a political reading here. And what, what Stephanie's pointing out is that there is a conservative political agenda at work here in a, a, kind, of, a, kind, of, uh, um, a kind of action thriller like this, where the enemy is the nation's enemy, the hero is the nation's hero, and those good qualities that we respect in the 
in the um, in the hero is getting the job done, not questioning, you know, whether whether it's the right job to be done. All right, um, let's talk about uh, what else can we talk about? Character, narration, diction. Who wants to jump in? General comments. In what way is this a guy's book? I see, I see about five hands up. I want to see more hands. So take a minute, turn to the person next to you, and share what your thoughts on this excerpt are, please. Okay, so very briefly, so here's just some of the things that people have come up with here. Um, so we've got, uh, kind of hard to see. So first person, uh, the author goes into depth on the character situation. We have flashbacks in uh, chronological order, stories within a story. Um, we're noticing here, um, in contrast to the whole empathy it bit, we notice a, very, we notice a lack of empathy. Uh, guy, guy snapped his neck and took it. You know, et cetera, et cetera. He's describing his own his own actions. Uh, uh, certainly, a lack of empathy. We're noticing these short, cons this short, concise dialogue. Damn, where and the swearing. Uh, really good notes on the diction there. Uh, we've got here. Um, he's very serious about what he does, about his work. Sounds like he's walking you through a game plan. Okay, very macho. Looking ahead to what you could have done. One event should lead to another until the job is done. Once the job complete, won't let anything go wrong. Determined, determined, get the job done, right? Got work to do, etc. cetera. Um, talk, you know, and yeah, then my yeah. mom is like, why are you so against people that do their jobs? <laughs> there you go. Um, here we've got, um, Oh, sorry, not that side. All right. Here we've got um, his job is what? Because the world, I can't quite read it. It's very, very terse, very terse. So there's a terseness to the dialogue, which is certainly seems to be a masculine feature. Now, so what's the point here? Well, I just want to, just the last thing I want to say is this. And you might find this interesting in you, or you might not. Um, but this is certainly a big, it's a big feature of literary studies. Um, literary criticism, what you would do at university if you were to study English, often, one aspect of it, often likes to investigate the ways in which a text, such as these texts, construct a gendered subject. Are we inherently gendered, inherently masculine or feminine? Do we see that the characters or the author are reinforcing stereotypes? Guys are like this and girls are like this? Or are they resisting those stereotypes? Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys next time.